Hello and welcome to Zenata Consulting's beginner series. This video is going to be the first in our series on Zoho Analytics. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover how to set up your first workspace in Zoho Analytics and get some of your data sources pointing to it. Um, from Zenata Consulting, I'm Tyler Colt, and with that, let's get right into it. So I've opened up a fresh account here inside of Zoho Analytics. Um, you know, right out of the gate here, I'm under my organization. Uh, you'll want to double check this when you log on. It's kind of easy to spin up one on accident that's separate from your company. So here under the little uh, info statement, I can make sure that this one is part of my Zoho One subscription. At that point, I generally go ahead and just favorite this so that you always drop into this organization automatically when you open up Zoho Analytics. Um, so from there, the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and create a workspace. Uh, a workspace is kind of a, you know, a section inside of Zoho Analytics that you can point various data sources to. Um, one important thing to know is that you can add more than one data source to one workspace. So for example, if you wanted to pull some reports on, you know, Zoho CRM, Zoho Books, and Zoho Projects, well, you could pull all of those data sources into one workspace so that you can report on them together. Generally speaking, when we're working with Zoho data, I advise that people just create one workspace and pull everything into that so that you can kind of get a full picture um, when you pull reports and pull in data from all of the various Zoho systems. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do to create a workspace is import some data. So I'll go ahead and open up the import data tab you know, and here we have all of our various data sources. You know, if you wanted to load in a file, you know, if you've got a CSV and you just want to upload that here, um, you can set up feeds and URLs basically to add data via API. Um, you can pull from a variety of cloud storage options, you know, databases like AWS and Azure, uh, local databases using a data bridge, as well as a whole huge variety here of cloud applications. So of course, you know, all the various Zoho applications are going to plug in, you know, CRM, books, the whole finance suite, sales IQ, desk projects, and so on. Um, but they do have a pretty robust set of connectors for non-Zoho apps. So of course, you know, Salesforce, HubSpot, QuickBooks Online, uh, QuickBooks Desktop as well, Zendesk, various project management systems, you know, Google Analytics and Google Ads are kind of big ones. If you want to report on, uh, you know, your ROI on marketing spend, you might want to pull those in. But we'll go ahead and get started by adding, you know, the Zoho Mainstay, Zoho CRM. I will say, if you're going to set up a Zoho workspace, I like to start with the CRM and then add all of the data to that. Um, it will naturally blend the data together. Um, using some of the keys inside of other applications that refer to the CRM. So I generally like to start off by just pulling in the Zoho CRM data. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Uh, this process is really quick actually to set these up. You know, this is really just walking you through the steps. You're going to need to authenticate the account. You're going to need to select which modules and fields you want to pull in. And then really from there, you just wait for it to sync and start creating your reports. So I'm going to go ahead and click through to the next page. Now, because I'm already logged into Zoho One, I don't need to re-log in to connect to the CRM. Um, I can go ahead and just connect directly. Now, because this is our first data source, it's going to create a workspace as we add it in. It's going to default when you pick the CRM to Zoho CRM Analytics, but I like to rename this to something like Primary Workspace because I know that I'm gonna pull in more data, like from desk, from books, and from projects. Um, so I generally will just go ahead and rename this something like primary workspace. Um, that just identifies that, you know, this workspace will contain all Zoho data. Give it a little description like this. Someone in the future who follows up on your work will really appreciate it if you add some descriptions. Um, now here, if you did have multiple organizations set up, you could pick which CRM account you want to pull from. In this case, you know, we're just working within our demo, so we just have the one. And now down here at the bottom of the page, we'll actually have all of our various modules and fields from the CRM that we might want to pull into um, analytics. 
Now in this case, this is a pretty basic CRM. We don't have many custom modules. We don't have a lot of custom fields. Um, if you do have any custom modules, they'll be available here for selection. So you just wanna make sure that when you're setting up this source, you go through and grab any of the relevant data that you need. Um, and so as we're looking at the modules here, you know, I've selected the leads. Now over here on the right, I can go ahead and start picking some additional fields. So what you wanna do is kind of think about what kinds of reports you wanna pull and what matters to you. So one example could be, I might wanna pull a report and see how good are we at converting leads based on the size of the company, right? And I can define size based on their annual revenue, or maybe I define size based on number of employees. And so we'll see if I want to pull a report like that, I'll need to add these to our data sync so that now it's going to pull in these fields. Each of these modules is going to come with some default fields that kind of analytics assumes that you're definitely going to want. Um, but it helps to go through and just add any of the additional fields that you may um, want to report on later. Now I will highlight if you forget a field when you're setting this up the first time, it's not the end of the world. You can always come back in and add additional fields, but it's just gonna save you some time if you can grab a lot of the primary ones that you know you're gonna need out of the gate. And so I'm kind of just going module by module here, scanning the field, seeing if there's anything in particular that I wanna pull a report on. Um, in this case, we're not gonna do anything too crazy in this data um, workspace, so. We probably don't need anything anything too advanced here. I will say when you're pulling the CRM, it is nice to check this stage history box for deals. Um, that could be its whole own video, but it's really helpful for looking at you know how fast are deals moving through your various stages. Now down here, I'll highlight real quick. You know these are some of the modules that are not turned on by default. So if you wanted to pull a report on, you know, how quickly are your team closing out their tasks? Well, I would need to turn on the tasks module and make sure that I pull in something like close time to compare it to our created time to calculate that value. And so I'll go ahead and turn these tasks on and sync them as well. Now down here at the very bottom, you can go ahead and choose how often you want this to sync. I always put it to hourly and do three hours because that's the fastest and you know why not go as fast as we can. You can also manually trigger a sync in the in between any of the regular syncs. So if you you know particularly just want to look at fresh data right now, you can always kind of override this and pull a sync manually. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and create our workspace. That's gonna give me a little smiley face here saying that it's working on it in the background. And then what we'll do is we'll take a quick pause and we'll come back once this sync completes and kind of poke around a little bit at the, uh, or with the data. Alrighty here, and now that we have fast forwarded in time just a little bit, we now see we have our sync uh, completed. The data sync was successful. Um, you can then, you know, once you've set up these data sources, you can find them all under the data sources tab over here on the left. Um, you'll see there's a room for a list here, and I'll show you how to add another one in just a moment. Um, but so we've got our CRM set up. If you ever did realize, you know, I needed some additional fields um, that I didn't pull in my first time, I can click on the edit setup button. That's going to go ahead and pull up the same exact screen. So if I realized, you know what, I'd like to pull a report on leads based on a tag that I put on them, I can go ahead and select that tag, add it to my sync, and then go ahead and save. And then next time that I uh, pull in this data, that additional field will get pulled in along with the records. So once I've added that, if I click sync now, now we're going to be able to report on tags because I've now added them to my sync. Um, that's going to be a process that you do regularly. You know, you build something new in the CRM, you come over to analytics, you add it to your sync, and then you pull it in for some additional reporting. Um, now, like we mentioned earlier, you know, you don't just need to work with one data source at a time. And into our primary workspace, we might want to pull some additional uh, sources. So up here in the top right, under add data sources, I'll go ahead and open that back up. And we can kind of repeat that exact process here. So let's say I wanted to pull in finance, and we'll go through this a little quicker than the first time. But let's say I wanted to pull in my Zoho finance data. 
adding finance is kind of a um, quick way to add all of the Zoho accounting applications. So, you know, books, subscriptions, uh, invoices, inventory, all of those various applications roll up under the finance connector. So if you are using a lot of those, you'll want to just pull it in this way so you don't have a bunch of different connections. Again, we'll have that choice of how often we want to sync. You can choose if you'd like it to create you some of their default reports. And then this is kind of a big one is because you've already set up the CRM, it's going to connect in your finance data based on some reference IDs to the CRM. So if you have the CRM and books syncing in your integration settings in those applications, well, in that case, in Zoho Finance, a customer record is going to store the account ID from the CRM, and a contact person is going to store the contact ID from the contacts in the CRM. I won't get too in, into the nitty gritty on this, but in essence, this would allow you to pull reports on data from books against data from the CRM. So if you're only tracking something like industry in your CRM account and not within books, well, you could pull over those invoices from books and report on them based on a CRM industry if you have data blending turned on. So in general, you're always going to want to activate that. And it's one of the reasons that we like to set up the CRM first so that you know all of the data blending just goes in automatically when you pull in your additional data sources. So I'm going to go ahead and just create this source here. And that will go ahead and pull in behind the scenes as we take a quick look at the CRM data. All righty, and so now that the finance sync has started, we can see here under our data sources tab, we've got now two data sources pulling in, uh, one from the CRM where we're pulling in some fresh data now, and then one from Zoho Finance where it's going through and doing its initial fetch. That initial fetch generally takes a little bit longer than future syncs because it actually has to create the tables inside of analytics for that data to end up um, you know, going into. But once you have these set up, you know, over time, you may find yourself adding some additional data sources, um, but each one is gonna follow basically that same exact process even when you're not working with a Zoho data source. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was useful. If it was, be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of our future videos. Um, this, of course, is just going to be one in our series of Zoho Analytics Beginner's Guides, uh, so be sure to look out for the next one if you found this one useful. Thank you.